up, get out right out of your bed, that's your quicksand. Getting rid of anxiety in head, you can fix it. Rid of stigmas, all of them you said, we ain't listening. Just remember, try to do your best, you can win this. Maurice Bernard, state of mind. Okay, Maurice Bernard, State of Mind Sunday. If you like what you see, hit the button. Um, every uh, every state of mind from now on, I'm going to be talking about mental health a little bit before I before I get into the conversation and and state of mind means anything, right? Means mental illness means exercising, just living life. And speaking of life, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of suicide since the pandemic. And I looked up the, the percentage, but I don't want to give percentages because sometimes they're wrong. But I just know that there's been way too many suicides. And when I hear about some a suicide, I don't know what it is in me, but I feel like I could have done something about it, even though I probably couldn't have. And I know I did a show on anxiety and suicide, and I don't, I don't know how to fix it. I, I, we have to figure it out, because look, you know, we only hear about the celebrities that commit suicide. We don't hear about all the you know, other people that you know, that I know, that the only way that I know how to fix it is by what I'm doing here. And that's talking, bringing awareness. I think that's a start. We gotta, we gotta somehow end this. Okay, now. <laughs> Uh, who I have today is somebody who was on already, and that's why I'm wearing this jacket, because I didn't appreciate when he came last time, and he wore this incredible outfit, and I think he, he outdid me <laughs> in my, on my own show, and I wasn't ready for it. So now... I went and got this really nice jacket, and I think he's a little jealous. <laughs> Teo Panglis, what's happening, brother? <laughs> I am. You're looking rather smart. I, you know, it's interesting. We went opposites today. I came dressed the last <laughs> time, and now I'm in a shirt, and you're dressed up. Well, anyway, um, that's how we resonate. Yeah, it's great. Uh, you know what you were talking about just now, the state of mind of people and committing suicide? Um, I think what this this um, terrible period that we've gone through in the last three years because of COVID, I think people got a sense of they had to look at themselves because we were all had to go interior uh, with our lives and find out who we are. And a lot of people found didn't know who they were because life has been demonstrating through commercial aspects. Um, how to escape, mm-hmm. how, how to look for things that really are not part of you. But in the end, when people have to sit quietly and, and think of themselves, they don't like it because it wasn't developed. The spirit wasn't developed. And that's part of the cycle. I mean, that's why we have every decade a change in our life because of those who have crossed our paths, who have taught us, those who've taught us lessons, good ones, bad ones, whatever. But I think people had to really seriously this time. This is a big change because there's a lot of chaos going on. I mean, leaderships and everything. People are really having to look at themselves and the lies that per- have permeated our societies and people are falling for it. And then when it's all over and they realize it was a lie and they felt that they were Do- taken, yes, taken yes. for granted... And then they, they start questioning themselves. And then when you go within and you haven't developed that inner self, then what happens with that is you start getting depressed. And that's always about not being in the present as opposed to either being in the past yeah. or the future. You know, if, you're not, if you don't know how to sustain yourself in the present without having to get 
either the drugs or the liquor or, or sex or whatever, all those things that really are only temporary. But when you start fixing yourself, when you start really building up your emotional state through experience, which comes with wisdom, well, then when those periods come, you're, you're available. You know how to sustain yourself through it. So, you know, obstacles are there because they're part of why we're here. You know, life is not about having a good time. The good time is the result of, of having to go through the obstacles. Exactly. Uh, and so I Beautifully said by you, Teo. Seriously. What you just said is what I say, but you just say it more intelligent. No, it's not more intelligent. It was just as, more succinctly. You have a chance every week to explain it. I have one chance <laughs> to talk about this. But it's, tr- but it's so true what you said. Look at I say that during the pandemic, everybody who would say to me at times, uh, I, like if I'd say I have bad anxiety, just, you'd you probably sleep it off. You'll be all right. It's not a bit. Nobody really understands what the pain that I felt from a manic episode, anxiety, depression. But during the pandemic, they've had to face it the f- for the first time. And they probably went, oh, now I get it. And it's harder when you haven't been through it. Right. Because you got no skills. Right. So now you're feeling it for the first time going, whoo. Yes, you see the shadows, you see. Yeah. You know, when they come across and there's no light on them, and you're going through a tunnel. I mean, you know, part of the reason I think I have elevated myself through life is because I've studied other cultures. You know, when you see how other people live, how other people can explain the way they do things, it makes you look at whether, you know, you how do you benefit out of that experience? Uh, you know, I go to Egypt, there's a different culture there. I get to Syria, a different another culture there. But it's about respect. You must respect other cultures and how they live without making it a derogatory remark because people like to flip things off quickly. Yeah. That way they can dismiss and therefore, you know, they think it makes their ego. That's when the ego yeah. comes in yeah. and that's where they trip. And so I'm always... I'm always saying to myself, best education I ever had was taking those journeys. I became an actor to take those journeys. People said to me, I cannot tell you how many times they said, uh, what, who is he and what is that accent? And I had to explain myself a lot until one day I thought, you know, am I not enough? Yeah, yeah. And by, by becoming enough, it's all about becoming, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. And then one day you become. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I'm at a point now where I can turn around and see where people have come to in life. Yeah. And a lot of people are in their 60s are not very happy. Why? Because the choices they made ended up failing because along the way they cheated. Ah. You know, it's not just cheating in your taxes yeah. and cheating. It's cheating life. And then they find out that they're left a- alone because other people have gone beyond them. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's why you say to yourself, you know, these are my treasured years now. These are, I earned these years. What am I going to do with them now? So part of what you're doing, part of what I'm doing with, even with my podcast is teaching people how well I've lived and the reasons why. And I'm finding that I made some good choices. Did I make mistakes? Yeah, but nothing that bad. And so what I wanted to talk about today is, which I've never... Uh, told even my producers, while everybody was going through COVID, I went home to Australia to see my family, and I knew there was something off. You know, you sense your body, I'm going, hmm. So when I came back, I went to the doctors, and they took tests and everything, and I had cancer. And I thought, well, my mother had cancer, my sisters had cancer. I've lived a very healthy life, and so what, you know, it was... It didn't throw me at first. What threw me was what I had to go through in order to... But what kind of cancer? It, it was collateral cancer, which is colon cancer. Oh, shoot. So I was in stage one, ready to go into stage two. And it was interesting because the show wasn't on. We had COVID. And I, one morning I woke up and I went, hmm, after doing six weeks of radiation, two weeks of 
I mean, I lost 50 pounds. Uh, friends of mine were shocked when they saw me. Um, I, I didn't think it was something that wasn't going to rectify itself. But I thought, what was the purpose for this? What, what's this pause in my life? And, uh, and what's the purpose of me? What, where am I going? You know, you lie in bed and you can't do much physically. And I, I, I didn't look in the mirror very often because when you're that thin, you know, and I've never been that thin. And um, the phone rang and I had just been nominated for Best Actor. And I thought, oh, that's interesting because it suddenly gave me a reason that I still had things to do. Yeah. So when you say about suicide and that, where people... You know, yes, I think it's it's right if they could call somebody and say, listen, I need to talk to you about something because I'm going through something, whatever it is, uh, ending the life. I mean, you know, there have been a lot of suicides because people have not been able to handle where they are so far. And there hasn't been anybody around them that they could be encouraged to look at other things in life, in your spiritual realm. Um, and I went, so I went through... I'm in the clear now. Were you, were you, when you first heard cancer, what was your thought? Were you petrified? Were you, okay, I'll get through this? Or? No, I was never petrified. It's funny. I have two fantastic friends who met me every morning to take me to the hospital because I ended up having to be in a wheelchair. And um, they, I would crack jokes while I was going to get my business with, with the drugs, and I never thought, I didn't get scared at all. Damn. I, di I thought, and that's why I say, at this point, how have you lived? How, what have you sustained within yourself? So that when I'm lying there and everybody's worried about COVID, and I never got COVID, um, but I had this, and how did I deal with it? And my friends told me there were days that they thought I was going to go. I was that weak. And how I looked. And... I thought, oh, my God, the Emmys are coming up and they're going to put me on camera and I'll have to oh confess it. All. I had all that to deal with. So I just said, you know, uh, peanut butter sandwiches and bananas and that's how you put back weight back on. But because I had a strong disposition, that's what I was told by the doctor. And um, I never felt I never felt fear. It was how to overcome. It wasn't... A but are you like that in life, yeah. Teo? Yeah. Oh, we'll see. There I you go. I think that's why... I, I think my mother used to say to me when I'd come home, she says, you know, I don't understand where you come from. Because she, you know, she's, she exampled the people around us, you know, the, the younger guys, my age, whatever. Uh, women were different because they didn't have the choices we had. But no, I never got afraid. Um, I had accidents. I would come home. I almost drowned twice. Uh, I mean, I almost into a shark attack. I mean, I've gone through some really scary moments. Um, Part of my podcast, the fourth one, is where they tried to kidnap me I at the pyramids. And I was really smart. I outsmarted them because I thought to myself, and I remember from my favorite movie, Ben-Hur, it said, how do you kill an idea with another idea? And so when they tried to kidnap me at 1 o'clock in the morning in front of those py pyramids and they started to drag me into the sands, I started to scream out, the Greeks built the pyramids because I thought, change the idea upset them how, what would you, how would you yeah. upset them and they started one translated to the other they start screaming so I hadn't, I hadn't escaped about this wide and I just raced through and they charged racing after me with rifles and then the police came and so the police told me that people have disappeared and I never come at night it was one o'clock in the morning because like an idiot I, I, I mean, that was not smart but it was the full moon and who didn't want to see the pyramid in the full moon and look up and see Cheops' pyramid in its glory? You know, wow. it, was just, it was just fantastic. I had Hezbollah pull me out of the car in southern Lebanon thinking I was an Israeli spy and threw me against the wall. Um, you know, I've gone through situations that I think when the cancer came, I went, do I, who do I tell? Because I don't want it to none of anybody's business. Uh, we weren't working, so I didn't have to tell my producers the interesting thing was, when it really came down, I never got a call from any of those producers to say congratulations. Not once. What? And I went, you know, we don't get a lot of Best Actor nominations. And so I thought, okay, so people reveal themselves. Yes. 
But what revealed the most important to me that I was a survivor. And because I'd gone through all those ordeals in my life, I built up uh, within myself a powerful, in this powerful being, spiritually. And because I meditate every day... How often do you meditate? Every day. I've been meditating for over 40 years, every day. And I go in under sometimes for an hour. And I go, wow, how did I stay there that long? But it's interesting. It's like your body just lines itself up. And you, when you're that still, how many times can you lay for an hour and not move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. in a semi-conscious state. Yeah, yeah. But what I do when I'm down there is I start to work things out. It's like you've got a filing cabinet <laughs> and you go through the yeah, file and say, yeah. oh, I'm going to deal with this today. I also, in my mind, clear myself of my aura of anything negative I've absorbed. So anyway. So then, so therefore, your, your attitude's great. Mm. So if, if cancer comes... Yeah. So anybody else, hey... Hey, people want to finish their lives. I mean, I know somebody right now, a big television actress she was, and uh, she's going through a terrible time with cancer, and she doesn't know what to do, but her life has been very superficial. I'm not making a judgment. It's just the way No, that's a, that, that's a fact. It's a fact. You know, people in show business sometimes uh, get elevated, and they believe their publicity, and, you know, they behave a certain way. I mean, you know, we went out uh, the other night, and there was all these photographers, and I said to Leanne Hunley, I said, uh, I don't want to do this. I don't need to go and take another picture and tell another story. So we dodged it. Now I understand why actors dodge publicity. It's not always necessary. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, uh, I, I've been fighting my ego forever. And I truly believe, I just had a panic attack three, three, uh, about a month ago. And I haven't had one since pandemic. And I won't get into why it came. And the reason, I'm an open book. I tell you everything. The reason I won't get into it is because it's so embarrassing. that it, it's, it's a ridiculous reason. But it was my ego. And I know. And it was my freaking ego. And then it, it came, the panic came, and I couldn't stop the thoughts. And they were ridiculous thoughts. They weren't like the pandemic. I understand, I, I, you know, how, what I went through there and everything, the end of the world and the whole thing, you know. But this was just trivial. But because I haven't, I guess I'm trying to chop away at my ego, but I'm not 100% there yet, obviously. Well, when you look at what an ego is, it's there to not want you to succeed. It's the thing that, it's because it's empty. It's an empty yes. vessel. There's nothing in there, really. Right. You know, it's like a black hole. You yeah. Know, no matter how much you fill it up, it's always going to be there. The smart thing is that the other side of you, which is the elevated, the evolved side of you, is the one that can look at it and laugh at it and be able to say, hey, I've seen you before. <sighs> you know, piss off. You know, this is how I do it. I say, when I know my ego is coming up and I'm, you know, believing or whatever, like the other day I'm going through the mall and, you know, it's like when Soap, um, Soap, uh, what was that movie uh, that did on Soaps with... Um, yeah, yeah, Soap Dish. You know, yeah, when they went through the mall. <laughs> I had a friend of mine with me and all these women were coming up and screaming and doing whatever and, and he goes, oh, my God, it doesn't... Doesn't that do something for you? I said, not particularly. It's not really about me. It's about what they have built up. And so in order to, to be sensible about those things mm -hmm. and not to take it for granted. So when you're succeeding and you're really doing well, the ego will come and trip you. I know. I know. <laughs> and then, but it's the development within that you've been doing all this life yeah. that says to it, yeah. you, once you recognize what it's doing, it's going to go. It's when you, when you, it's like you're on blindfolders and you're walking through and you trip because you're believing everything in front of you is so important. Yeah. I mean, if you look at what ha has happened to our politicians, is because they have tripped. Yeah. Their egos have taken over through their lies or their pretensions and yeah. all that. <coughs> when you don't love your society, when you don't love, you see, one, one of the beautiful reasons we evolve and we can, um, develop this wisdom is because we can leave ourselves alone. 
we can look at other people now and say, I, I've got time for you now. I'm okay. And so when you do that, and that's why people who sacrifice their lives to help others, they're very evolved beings. Yeah. They sacrifice because they're enough. So when you're enough, and you've been heralded yeah, in many ways, you know, you, you know, but they're not the assets you actually have to live with. It's what you have to live with is what did you bring out, what did you bring in, I should say, to work out so that through the lifetime you you you're able to transform into that and then become something else and then become something else until you have totally become who you've come into this life to be and then that's where the that to me is where the party begins in life exactly you know so that's the best way uh, to me uh, if you recognize your ego I I you're that much more in charge of it what happens but is what does it keep getting me because you haven't handled it yet you, you you haven't you haven't built the other side yet that needs to that has been you haven't nurtured yourself you haven't loved the being that you are enough in life even though you've had all these successes and you've got a wonderful family you're still who you are you when you go you don't take this with you what you take is who you've become yeah and that's why all that meditation is once you go within and you're not going through anxieties because you have aligned yourself up and, you know, what's in there is a wonderful spirit. I mean, you're a very wonderful spirit. Yeah. I mean, I can tell from your tone and how much you care, but you still have that inner work that still needs to pay attention. And <sighs> Obviously. Yeah. It's, you know what? It's not so bad, really. One, once you see, once you put the light on the shadow. Yeah. I want to, Tao. I don't like fucking going... Sorry, so I, do you, do I hate to swear <laughs> in the fucking... No, we don't. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like this shit, man. No, because it's something that pulls you down, and but it's one of the big things that you've brought into this life to overcome. Yes. I mean, you know, yes, you had your family, yes, you've had your success, but what is the spirit about? What do you take with you once you've gone and go on the other side? What's there waiting for you? A lot of people who are not evolved will stay on the ground floor, if I can put it that way. Yeah. Those people who evolve are able to see things clearer. When they say the Christ, the light of the Christ, yeah. the reason why we can't see people that evolved is because their light's too bright. So we can't see it. Mm -hmm. So they have to dim their light in order for us to see them. That's why there's so much doubt in the world, because we need evidence to everything. Yeah. yeah. No, the evidence yeah. is here. Yeah is knowing, yeah, and that's what got me through. And um, and I still didn't tell them it worked. I go back and they that's go, amazing. oh, man, you're looking so great. And I'm going, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yes, so. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, you keep saying this, you're not a, this thing, and I, I'm going to tell you a story that I tell young actors that I've worked with. Uh, Sharon Stone mm. was doing Speed the Plow in an acting class with Roy London. And she sucked every week. Just not good, not good, not good. Finally, he kept helping her, helping her. Finally, she came in and she was brilliant. And he said, you were brilliant. And she said, but why now? He said, because now you know you're enough. And it's a lot of what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't think I, 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 I have to say this. I don't think I'm quite there yet. But that's okay. Oh, I know it's okay. There's no, the, the, you know, you, you, sure you come in to do certain things, but there's not a schedule that you have to become at this particular time. I get that's it. That's putting pressure on yeah. your involvement. Yeah. In the end, you know, it's really simple. Things that give you understanding, when they reveal themselves, they're simple. Yeah. Not complicated. We make them complicated I'm, I'm, because yeah. they need to be more important. Otherwise, we're going to get bored. The yeah. gets bored. Yeah. So let's make it dark as possible and yeah. scare you and do all that. Yeah. Simple things. When you see the, those great people over the, through the centuries who evolved, the reason why we have the saints and everything is because those people evolved in a way that became simple. They, you know. The yeah. Our politicians are not simple because they have to constantly repeat their lies. Yeah. And, and that's what happens. And that's what happened to some of my friends. I've, I've kind of cleared the decks because I can't rescue anymore. See, I became the rescuer for those people. Yeah. 
and I try to save the day, taking them overseas, taking them, doing whatever. I couldn't do it anymore. I thought to myself, you know, I can't. I'm not responsible for what you brought in. It took me a while to understand that. I said, you know what, you're not doing your homework. And that's why you're suffering now, because you're too scared to do it on your own. So you keep repeating the, the victimization of your life in order for someone else to do your homework. Yeah. And I said, and this is the time now that you're looking, and you've got to do your own homework. I can't do it anymore. I've got my own. Yeah, you know. sure. Now, uh, I want to talk about your podcast, The Lost Treasures, because mm. I was fat. I really into. I mean, I listening to you. But before we get into that, we've had such a great talk. That I don't feel like a asking you stupid questions. What are, what are the stupid questions? <laughs> give me, give me a shot. <laughs> What's the stupid question? <laughs> <laughs> like, have you seen Robert Redford's love handles? <laughs> oh, you would ask me that question. Where did you get that one? Ah! Oh, you heard of a story somewhere. Oh, yes, that was. That was <laughs> well, how I got away with that, I don't understand. Because, you know, at 26 years of age, I had a mouth. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if anybody said anything to me, I'd go and tell them, you know, right on. And when I was doing his clothes at Melodondra in New York, and I had this fabulous suit that I, you know, I said, you should, you should wear this suit. It's great. It's, it's chocolate brown. It was a very fine cotton velvet with beige buttons. But How old was he? Um, I think he was in his late thirties. Damn. And so you know, it you know, it, just to simplify it, all I did was, you know, I when you put the arms up like this and you're standing in front of the mirror, and it's got a high armpit, and you come down, you know, to give the feeling of this fabric and how it looks on you, and then you come to a couple of bumps, and you're going, oh, you got to get rid of this. <laughs> So that's what that's it amazing. Was. Though. It was because his mouth dropped open and said in mine. So you know, when you think about, you had such a mouth. Wow. Myself, but the other one is you worked with uh, <laughs> Jane Seymour because I love Jane Seymour. Yeah, she was cool. She was okay. Ah, Omar Sharif was great. I know you had a thing with Omar Sharif where he forgot his lines. Yes. She, he, he didn't like her. Oh. So I was at a d dining table. We were sitting all around, and he threw an insult at her. <sighs> she stormed out. And I said, I thought, wow, that was quite a shot and unexpected. But he was that kind of a man, you know. He just said whatever. He just said whatever he wanted to but say. But you were that way. I was. Yeah, wow. But, but um... If I'm working with someone, I don't say that. No. No, because you know how it can affect their performance. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because if the other actor's not doing their work, then you don't. Then you don't look, yeah, good. I get it. You know, throw me the ball. But he didn't give, he just said whatever the... Just said it, uh, and it was interesting because, uh, you know, I was away in, in Dubrovnik in Athens and Venice, and he, and she was, um, she was fine, but um, it... But, what got me later was when we went to the screening of the miniseries, she came up to me and she said, that was beautiful work. I loved your work. I said, oh, thank you. And then three months later, I went to a charity in, in Beverly Hills and she was there and her nose was up in the air and I went over to her and I said, hi, how are you? And she just looked at me and walked away. And I went, wow. That's to me the ego. That is the ego, yeah. That's where, it, you know, I, and it's funny, when people do that, I understand why the public, if an, if a, Someone goes up to celebrity and they don't treat them properly, they know that you just lost that audience. Yeah. They're going to tell that story. That's true, yeah. I, I feel the same way. You know, so uh, it changed. You know, it, When I did Sadat, the miniseries Sadat, the lead actor uh, didn't admit that he was the problem and it fell on me. And uh, I haven't been able to watch him again. Really? Yeah. Because I thought to myself, because I can see who he is and I don't. 
there's, there's no, I mean, I met Charlton Heston, and I was going to be working with Charlton Heston, and he was such a beautiful human being. He didn't disappoint. Yeah. And so all these years, when I see Charlton Heston, I think of the good memories. Yeah. You know, don't get self-important, because that's going to trip you. Then he way. talk like. Oh, he was, I liked it, because he said to me, I like what you're doing. It's so simple. He talked about simplicity. Yeah, yes, yes. And well, I said, uh, well, I'm innocent. Still, I said. Yeah, because he, he's bigger. Oh, my God. His stuff was he's big. huge. I mean, Ben-Hur and... Uh, I mean, he did some fantastic movies. I, I love... Uh, King... Uh, what was the, the, the... King Kong? Not King Kong. No. Planet of the Apes. Oh, yes. Ah. Yeah, he did that one, too. Um, and, and, and when he played also uh, Michelangelo, remember? In the oh, Agony and the Ecstasy. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, he was really... Uh, a real classic, and I was going to do Man for All Seasons at the Amundsen with him, and then something fell through. And but I'll always remember him well. And but when you came up at that time, a lot of those actors were bigger, big, big, kind of over the top. But how did you get you mean in? in the performance? Yeah, I think that's why he said I was simple because you know the the performance of. Uh, of the character that he was going to play, which was Thomas More, was a very it was a man who was s s centered. Mm. So he had to find that. Oh, I had to find the innocence of the character because he hadn't been manipulated yet, oh. and he didn't manipulate to get ahead in life. He was just at the beginnings of it. He evolves as the character progresses in the play, but um, you know he's. I remember he, when I heard that he had Alzheimer's, I was very sad. Uh, you know, everybody goes through their time. Yeah. What it, what it is. But I wonder how Charlton, I, I, we're getting on Charlton Heston here, but I wonder how, because I don't know a lot of his work, but I do know a lot, that I, like Planet of the Apes, Ben-Hur, you know, where he's a big, if, if it were, there were a director that could have reined him in to do nothing, did that ever happen with him? You know, I thought he was such a powerful man. He worked with the great directors. You know, when you work with great directors and you're professional, yeah, you understand the, your position and the person who is there to direct. We don't have that today yeah. so much. Yeah. I mean, I'm not just talking about soap operas. Uh, not, there's not a lot of directing soap operas. If there's any. You know, if there's any, yes. If there's any. It's, uh, you know, and just... Follow your marks yeah. and say your line. No, the the great ones. I mean, I remember I, I was doing um, a miniseries, a three, and no, it was a three-hour movie for NBC. And I remember the director Gary Nelson said to me, "Where the hell did you get your training? Why? Because he didn't have to direct me. Yeah, because I knew when the camera came, I knew that I make the move, the camera will have to follow me. Yeah." So that's what I kept doing. He says, yeah, you, 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 you direct yourself. And I said, well, that's what we've had to do in daytime. When you have the skills, then you can... Yeah, if you're, you being, don't need yeah, if you're listening and <coughs> you're feeling... Or let's get to your... Podcast. Yeah. The I'm lost very proud of it. I really You am. should be proud of it. And I'm going to be honest with you. You telling the story is... I would not had, have listened... To the whole thing. But your voice, your story, but I get lost because, uh, you know, history for me was, I barely graduated from high school. Not that that matters, but I don't have that kind of attention span. But the way you talk, you speak, the way you tell this is, for me, I, I got from the beginning to the end. And I know maybe for you it's like, well, why, why wouldn't you? Well, I don't have to. No, I understand. I you mean, know, I'm like, oh, that's enough. In this day and age, people don't. Exactly. But you're the way, and also your sound effects, yeah. all that stuff you put in. Yeah. There was a moment. I'm going to, yes. There was a moment uh, where you go into some mansion, I think, and there's a yeah. woman there. And then she takes you, and I think she doesn't treat you the very well, maybe. Yeah. Like, man, yeah. Very dismissive. Yeah. 
and then she takes you into a room. What you put in there with that sound, sound is like I was in there. Yeah, that, that, that I contribute because uh, my agent, uh, Jordan Measures and his company, 5200, I said to him, when you enter that room, I want to know it's the 19th century and there's yeah. certain music playing. And he put that in his guy that he worked with. They put that in. It's it's like in in the in the third podcast. One of the great things that uh, was phenomenal for me was I I sent an email to an explorer, and uh, in, in from England, and he was discovering the new route of where Ulysses, you know, the Odyssey. Yeah. I mean, every man, that's the journey of the heart. Yeah. That story. And how, how we follow our heart and what we discover about it. So what did Ulysses do? How did it, why did it take him 10 years to go get home? Why did it take the war 10 years to, to complete? So that's 20 years away. But his search was going home, looking back to see his wife and his son. And he hadn't seen them in 20 years. Damn. All the obstacles... And you having your children, you know, you can imagine what it must have been like. So this man is making new discoveries and saying to the world that Homer was not just a poem. It was a true story. It was an epic story. And it's not where we think it is today. It's not on an island called Ithaca today. It happens if you read Homer. It says it's the island that's further west. Then why is Ithaca further east? So that didn't gel. So when he's standing with another explorer called Biddlestone, and the name is John Crawshaw, and they're staying, standing in a dip, it is. It's, it's called the Thinia Valley, and they're standing there together talking. They looked up at the mountain and they thought, this doesn't seem real, this doesn't seem... Was this always together, these two, these places? Was there an earthquake, possibly? They checked the geography, and they found out from the... And how they found out is... the. What they can do with geology today because of the LIDAR system, which is from satellites, is that they realize by checking the, the, the stones that had fallen, that each one, did they fall periodically over hundreds of years or did it come down in one mass? And did these two islands, was these two islands at one point, did they join? They discovered it between the 4th and 6th century that an earthquake so large came and shattered that, that, those two islands, the mountain came down, brought two islands together. No. And that's how he, Ulysses Island became, through the centuries, something else. So he was hidden. So they're exploring this. The Greek government's very excited because it's going to be announced soon that they have found the real place of where Ulysses is. So I went, and why it was important for me was, I, you know, the... the uh, medicine that I had to take and what they did with me with radiation really, because I was an athlete really screwed up my, my hips, can I climb can I walk that far now, at this stage of my life well he took me, I didn't say anything to him and he says we're going to be climbing mountains and everything, is that okay with you? I said oh sure, you know, I thought oh we'll see I spent eight hours climbing up and down the mountain showing me all the, the pig farm where Ulysses came oh. from and the, I went through a, where they 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 used to uh, for the uh, they used to throw the spears and 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 discus uh, games, and I'm standing there in that field. And this was last year, and I went wow. So that's my f that's my third podcast is that story. The first is finding, as you heard, yeah. the treasure of Troy. Yeah, that was the good. second one is the treasure he found in Mycenae, where the where the Trojan War started, and the curse. The curse is something. Unbelievable. I, I want to just mention what the yeah. why the curse came. In 1300 BC, the king of in in this particular part of Argos in Greece, um, was married to the, and and he had his queen. His brother comes to visit anyway. He has an affair secretly with the king's wife. She gets pregnant and she has twins. He finds out and he throws his his uh, brother out of out of the land, right? So years later, he says to him, I forgive you, please come back. I want to see my brother. 
So he comes back, the brother, and she brings the twins with him. So he said, we're going to have a feast. We can all celebrate your return and the love for one brother to another. And when they feed him the feast and he eats his f food and there's all this celebration, he's wondering where his sons are and he's looking around and saying, where are my boys, where are my boys? And suddenly the king turns around and says, you just ate them. So that began, no. that began the curse of Atreus. So that curse goes through the story of the second podcast and we find out... What? Yeah, and we find out... And the way uh, Schliemann had found Troy and found Mycenae, but he died basically in the gutter of Naples. So the, I thought the curse continued once he unleashed. I mean, can you imagine in the second podcast, he's digging up something that has not been dug up in over 1,300 years. Uh, no, sorry, 3,300 years. And he's building up, digging, 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 digging. And suddenly he comes across a, a mask made of gold. And he's gets a brush dusted in a way and he picks the, the mask up and there is an ancient king from 1300 BC with the teeth, no nose, two eyes and the face is there staring back at him and within seconds it turns to dust. So he has one burial site after what? another. So he finds these five graves and these he thought the, the archaeologists thought that they belonged to the Trojan War that were earlier of a Bronze Age. So that's the second one and how the curse continued. The third is Ulysses and the fourth, I reason why I did these podcasts and it was because I'd gone to Alexandria and I remembered Schliemann saying, where is the tomb of Alexander the Great? Where is his tomb? And he found out that it that was underneath the, a mosque called the Daniel Mosque. And so I thought, I'm going to follow his footsteps. So I went in and I said to them, oh, did you know this story? No. And then I look in the mosque and there's a big hole. I said, what's that hole? He said, why do you ask? I said, well, I'm curious. Why, wh what is that hole? So I took 20 bucks out of my pocket and I gave him $20. He said, you want to see what's beneath in that hole? I said, yeah, sure. So he goes, takes me, pulls, puts a ladder, and within 10 seconds, I am standing from 21st century Alexandria. I climb down. I am now walking along 1st century Alexandria and this big, huge abyss full of tombs. And he said, I can't let you go too far because the thing could collapse. So he said, but just... Just stay where you are and have a look. So he gave me a flashlight and I looked at these ancient tombs. Ten seconds, I'm walking, I'm walking in, the ancient, in the ancient world. I mean, and then wow. I, thought, I have to talk about why these stories were important to me because to me it's, it's, it's walking the ancient road yeah. and seeing how those things affect me and my spirit. See, once you find things... Once you find your spirit finds what stimulates it and educates yeah, yeah. it and all that, then you're, you, that tells you you're on the right track. And that is a continuation for me about further investigations of other things that I'm interested in. So that's why I did the podcast. And wh when's this coming out? or what's September 5th. It's going to be on Spotify and Amazon and um, uh, Apple. All the main... Um, Lost... Treasures. The Lost Treasures, yes. Yeah. I think uh, I'm going to listen to it, man. Well, I tell you something. And I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> but I'm, I'm fascinated by your travels. and, and how Well, the last time we spoke. Yeah, yeah, I was really into that. We were talking about journeys, yeah. you know. Um, you know, it's, there's something about, that's why I say, about your life. You've got this life. You don't know what it before or after. But how well do you live the life? So when you're going through your struggles, like we all go yeah. through struggles, you say to yourself, I'm better than this. I'm more than this. I, yeah. I can achieve. You've achieved so much. Yeah. And you're yeah. constantly achieving. Yeah. And you're constantly, uh, your, your achievements are still in the present. It's yeah. not like, oh, well, he's fading. You're yeah. still constantly yeah. recharging yourself. So yeah. in the same application that you've put in the success of your career yeah. is the same thing you should apply 
to the success of your spirit. Ooh, I like that. It's there. It's just a matter of tapping into it. You're right. I like that. That's yeah. that. I'm gonna. I, I'll figure it out, Teo. I'm gonna figure it out. All right. Listen, we we have this. This was better than the last time. Yeah. But the last time was really Different. good. But this one there was a lot of real freaking, real good, deep, important stuff to discuss. Well, we're at the time of our lives where we can talk about them without shame. With what yeah, we've been through. that's the whole thing. It's that's ego. Yeah, shame. yeah. And and what I like about this conversation is you taught me a lot oh, about myself, good. and that's cool because I'm so sexy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, a few of my friends told me that actually. <laughs> All right, listen, uh, we'll do it again, man. We just have a, like a every three months. <laughs> you know, we, we, we should do. What are you exploring now? Yeah, now, yeah. How, well, how's the advancement going? It's fun, man. You know, I, th see, that's the beauty about maturing. You see what we've accomplished yeah. and what we've. And when was the last time you came here? Uh, a few months ago. Wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. It, it, it was like we. We. we yeah. I uh, tell you, we're all souls. Yes. Yeah, that's true. State of mind. Teo Pangless, the lost treasures. Beautiful. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, dude.